Hello everyone, it is Press Any Button and we are back with another Unity tutorial. A short one, but a good one nonetheless, and a useful one also. So in this tutorial we're going to be focusing on adding a UI component. And that UI component is going to be our score, as you might be able to get a bit of a sneak peek of in the game preview over here. The other thing that we're going to want to do during this tutorial is to fix up some things with our player to make sure that we don't have any issues shooting because we've got some collider issues that I encountered just setting up this part of the tutorial and I thought you guys would probably encounter the same thing because we're all using the same packages. So I'll show you guys some ways to work around those issues. But first, let's get straight into seeing what this new UI component actually does for us. So I'm going to hit the play button and I'm just going to demonstrate and talk through everything that we're seeing. Okay, so here we have it. We have our game. We have all of our invaders moving. They're all animated as we want them to. We've got this one invader shooting shots. I haven't set them all up because, you know, I'm not building the game yet. And we've got our score component up here. And, and that's actually a UI component that we can't interact with. Everything else we can pretty much interact with, but that score component is non-interactable and we're going to have to remember that when we're actually adding it to our game. Now I want to show you guys what actually happens when we destroy one of these aliens. So I'll hit space and there we have it, one of our aliens has been destroyed and the score goes up to 10. Now 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, you know, 70 onwards to about 250 and that's where we run out of aliens to shoot. So that's what we're going to be working on this lesson and I'll show you how you can implement that UI component into your game and it's going to be really simple, really quick. So let's exit the game mode and get started. Okay, so creating our actual UI component is going to be really simple. All we have to do is go over to the hierarchy here and then right click, go to UI find canvas and then we've got our canvas and then we want to go to add component type in can and then we find canvas group and we want to add that to this component and I was talking about how our UI component isn't interactable if you think about it all of the games that you've played you probably don't interact with the UI too much well the HUD the HUD too much usually a HUD is just a developers way of outputting sort of messages to you like uh, here's how much ammo you've got or here's how much health you've got. So we don't want that to be interactable. We just want that to change as a result of certain events happening without having the player directly affect the component. So we've removed interactable and we've unchecked blocks raycast. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to select this canvas component in our hierarchy. And then we're going to right click, go to UI, and then text and now we've added a UI text component and just as a place marker we're going to have score zero or just as a marker to show us what our final thing will look like I'm going to have score zero there and if we go to the scene view we can see that it's written on this box here and this is the box that will hold all of our UI now if you're not seeing that but you are seeing a couple of uh, lines that are perpendicular to each other what you're actually seeing is you know your normal game all you need to do is just zoom out quite a bit and you're going to be able to see all of your UI components here the next thing that I've done is I've put a font in the assets folder over here and I think I'm just going to use that font because it looks a lot nicer and then we're going to go over to color here and then we're going to pick a color. I'm just going to go with white because that's pretty much what we've been going with so far. Hit that cross there. And we don't want our score to be in the middle of the game. So let's use some of the tools that Unity provides to move that around. So in terms of alignment, I'm going to have it in the middle here. So I'm going to click on that box. And then I'm going to click on here where it says uh, center and middle. And here I have my anchor preset. And if you are here for the bullet tutorial, you'll be very familiar with this. All we need to do is press Alt and then click on this one in the top left. And it seems that our text component is in the right place. I'm just going to inch that in by about five units. So it's about 85 to make sure that it's not too far on the edge. Now the next thing that we need to do is add a script to tell Unity what to actually do with this text component. 
So we're going to go to add component, uncheck that. For you it would probably be new script. And then I want you guys to call this score manager. But for me, a class called score manager already exists. So I'm going to go over to scripts and I'm going to add score manager. And that's going to be a script that you can find on the Unity website. And of course you'll find it in the package that's provided in the description. So what we want to do with this score manager script is, well, I'm going to open it and show you guys what this script actually looks like. All right, so we're here in Mono Develop, and as you see, I've got my script set up. I've just taken it from the Unity website because it works exactly how we need it to work. And the person who provided this script has kindly given us guidelines on what each component does. But to go over what this script does, it allows us to add a certain amount to our score each time a certain event is fulfilled. So we have text.text .text score here. So that's why I said our text UI component was pretty much a placeholder at this point. If I wanted, I could change this to points colon and it would display points in the top left. So hopefully you have an understanding. This line mainly deals with the visual aspect and then here we have plus score, which is the score that will add on each time an enemy is destroyed. So we've seen pretty much everything here. There's not much for me to go over. And you might be thinking, well, this script is neat, but how are we going to tell Unity that we want to link destroying our enemies with adding points on the score? Well, I'll tell you right now. Let's go over to our enemy destroy script. Now, if you remember, our enemy destroy script looked a lot like our ally destroy script, as you can see, very similar. Pretty much the only difference are the tags. But you will be able to easily see that I've added in a couple of lines of script. Now, our first line, public int score value equals 10, dictates how much each enemy destruction is worth. So we add on 10 points each time we destroy an enemy. And our second line references the script score manager. And it allows Unity to make the link that, okay, an enemy's been destroyed, so we need to add something to the score, which is this value of 10. Now we could probably mess around with these and as you know in our actual project we've got so many different types of aliens and I'm pretty sure in traditional Space Invaders these aliens would give you a different score for destroying each of them and we could probably mess around with that if we mess around with our tags some more but that's not the scope of this lesson right now because we're just going to get into the technical side of really getting this UI component working. So if we go over to Mono Develop we can see that these are the only two lines of script that we need to add in. Make sure you've got your semicolons here and you just need to put your public int right over where it says void on trigger enter collider other. Once you've done that you want to hit save and return to unity and make sure that your score manager script also looks similar to this and return to unity after saving that. So now that we're back in unity let's test out how this new game component works. All the scripts are assigned to something. The score manager script is assigned to the text UI component right here. And of course the enemy destroy script is still assigned to our beam. So if we hit play, we can see what happens. Okay, so as you can see, it's different now because I put points when I was setting up the score manager script. And that's what I was talking about. So whatever appears in that score manager script in those speech marks is only there to change what's written next to our actual score. The score will always remain a number as long as you're following that script properly. Now if we fire at our aliens we see that the script is working just the same as it used to and we don't have any issues. And that's really good because we've now added a really important UI component that gives our player more of a sense of satisfaction every time they get rid of an enemy. So we're just going to exit the play mode. And now I'm going to talk about some of those fixes that I mentioned at the beginning of this session. So I'm just going to hit file save scene. And let's take a look at our player game object. Now one thing that you'll definitely notice with the Mesh Collider is that it's a bit short for some reason, it's a bit different. Now imagine that our Mesh Collider was taking up the whole space of the tank as usual. Well we'd think that's fine, but there are some issues with how our enemy destroy script is set up. Because every time our bullets collide with our own collider, 
the bullets are destroyed but our tank is preserved and that means that we see the shot but it doesn't travel anywhere and it's immediately deleted out of the scene and of course we don't want that because at that point we're not really even playing a game so what we want to do uh, just imagine that my collider looks the same as yours what we want to do is we want to go down to our collider wherever it says collider I think it says square collider possibly for you guys and then we're just gonna hit that cog and then click remove component and we're going to go to add component physics box collider and then with our box collider we want to go to edit collider and then we're given these little nodes and if you just drag that down just to the base of the barrel right there you should be able to avoid the instance where both colliders come in contact with each other and if we hit play we can see if that is indeed the case and that is indeed the case okay so that has been another unity tutorial I hope you guys have been enjoying this series, it's coming to an end soon but we're going to have something right around the corner that I'm currently working on, so that'll be another thing to help us improve our skills in Unity. But as always, thank you for the support and thank you for watching this tutorial. This has been Press Any Button and I will be back another time.